Hi. Oh. Okay, so last year we gave a talk at the LGM about uh, Libra typography and uh, our excitement with the new developments, the add font face property, Google Web Fonts, and all that jazz. But n now, one year after, we would like to talk about the goals and how we can push Libra typography further and uh, create an ecosystem and a way to keep it going. And uh, we think that in this aspect, we identified four problems that we think the proprietary model for type design doesn't solve. So we would start with this idea that type design is hard, slow, and for experts only. The idea that when you are doing a font, it's something that will take you years, a process that will go on for a really long period of time where you'll do lots of experimentation and iterations until you achieve a final uh, finished font. And uh, if you compare that with the uh, things that we're seeing happening now, and for example, Vernon Adams, which is a little bit of our type hero, in the sense that every week he's putting something new out there and showing that to create a typeface, you really don't need to be there by yourself uh, alone uh, for five years at least designing a font. And also this idea that it is a loan process. Like uh, last year we did a workshop here at Media Lab where we designed a, a font together with a group of 20 people and it turned out really well. And uh, this idea that you have to have a coherent thing in the end doesn't mean that you have to do it by yourself and that it is an expression of your personal style. And also the thing with being an experts only task. So um, it, it requires a lot of uh, technique and you need to be aware of uh, many specific details and. Uh, it's something that will require your full attention. Then the second thing, uh, that uh, when you release a font, that the design is uh, final, that it is a finished thing and a stable thing. And uh, it's very common if you ask uh, fellow designers if they have uh, a font, uh, that they will answer, yes, but uh, I didn't finish it and someday I will do that. So this idea that you'll only release it when it's complete and finished and that what you have, while well, you didn't uh, get to the final uh, part of the design, that it's something that you cannot put out there. And maybe inspired by the, the free software way of development and the idea of release early, release often, we can actually put a typeface out there without waiting for this long process to end and getting uh, a moment that we think it's uh, the final where, when things are set in stone. And in this uh, case, we have uh, the typeface that we did for the magazine, Prop Courier, which is a typeface that we are improving and uh, releasing every time we do a new number of the magazine. Right, so um, problem three. Um, Proprietary type tends to be generic. So if you think about um, um, fonts like Helvetica, Dean, uh, Gotham, uh, the, which was made famous by the Obama campaign in 2008, or uh, Neutraface, which is another really um, overused um, typeface, um, they're usually more often than not geared to the widest um, audience possible and the widest kind of uh, uses. And uh, then you kind of miss out um, uh, with this whole global uh, typeface uh, usage, you miss out on local sensitivities and you also go towards a very weird homogenization of um, um, aesthetic homogenization, as you can tell by when you see the kind of designs that feature Helvetic and the kind of dry um, expression that it might um, bring. Um, this is an example of stroke fonts, um, which uh, have 
been used for either printed circuits or uh, pen plotters, which are definitely not mainstream uses of fonts, and uh, that's probably why you will, you will very rarely find this kind of typeface, which is drawn with the stroke um, on a proprietary workflow. On the other hand, we kind of need it, um, because we have a pen plotter, and we like to work with it. Um, so we use, thankfully, we have public domain fonts to work on. Um, and also, this idea of um, catering to local um, aesthetics and local culture, this is a typeface um, from a, a designer from Porto, where we come from, which is really an aesthetic um, that's really, really uh, particular to Porto. It's a Creative Commons licensed font. And uh, we really like this. We really like this idea that um, instead of trying to find the one typeface, like Helvetica, the uh, uber neutral typeface, we can actually look for um, thousands, millions of local expressions crystallized in local typefaces. And uh, Krix uh, is another wonderful example of uh, a local typeface that has a local meaning. This is a, a, a sticker typeface that OSP have um, been showcasing in other LGMs. And um, it's a very uh, very specific to this Harbeck neighborhood, which is a Brussels neighborhood, and the design that you'll find there, the kind of um, letterheads that you'll find there, and uh, this revival that then was made by OSP makes a lot of sense there, and um, even though you can use it in another um, context, it's not intended at all to be neutral. In this case, we don't like this idea of neutral. And uh, finally, um, the problem of centralization. Uh, generally, uh, typography and type design is centralized around institutions like ATypeI, MyFonts, uh, FontFonts, and MA cor um, master courses like the University of Reading or the, uh, the other uh, type media course in The Hague. And this leads to very small cycles, very, uh, circles, very small circles, very um, restricted circles, and uh, the knowledge uh, necessary, for instance, for shipping fonts, uh, how do you publish a font, usually gets um, um, limited to these uh, small circles. Um, we can find um, instances like uh, foundries, Libra foundries like VTF or uh, OSP foundry, um, even though I think it's not fair to talk of, of a whole Libra type ecosystem because Right now, um, this is Google Web Fonts. Apparently now it's called Google Fonts, we found yesterday. Um, but um, the thing is, it's pretty awesome. It's wonderful that it exists. It's a wonderful effort. So with that out of the way, um, it also poses a, a bit of an issue with regards to centralization um, because everything is there and then you, the ecosystem becomes dependent on the actions of a single agent, like this latest development when the Google Fonts team announced that they will begin showing results for proprietary typeface, which is something that we totally don't agree with. We're not getting into that, but then if, um, if we have a, an ecosystem, centralized ecosystem with few players instead of a diverse ecosystem, and here we'd like to remind this, the point of diversity raised by Chris Kelty um, in his talk, and uh, the idea that the ecosystem will be more stable the more agents there are. Um, and this is um, our last problem that we think maybe there might be close to solving with uh, Libre type of, oh yeah, this is VTF type foundry and the OSP type foundry. So what we think we're missing here is a, a scene, events and institutions that can bring the things that are happening already together and that can uh, help them grow even more. And uh, we think that before, if you, what we need is uh, more foundries. So if you think about the idea of foundry, it evokes this, uh, this environment with uh, a space with lots of machines, heavy machines, and uh, involving lots of costs and uh, work. But nowadays, if you think, what is a foundry? It's actually just a website, a website where you put fonts and people can download them. So why not start your own foundry? And uh, the only things that you need are a font editor, tools for shipping, and the website itself. 
Um, one example that really uh, got us thinking about the uh, need for a scene and the uh, advantages of a scene is the Serreria uh, workshop that we led and that ended up, in, among other things, in the typefaces that you are seeing in the LGM signage. Um, this came out from these walls, which you might have seen also on that side of the building. Um, and then we just started developing them collaboratively, sharing knowledge and uh, sowing seeds of something that would be coming. So besides the typefaces themselves, um, which we were truly surprised to find in the LGM um, identity, which were, we were not involved in, and in the Media Lab Prado identity, which was the biggest surprise of all. Besides that, um, we found we were really delighted to find people who attended the workshop here at the LGM. And specifically, we were talking to Pablo uh, over there, who um, who was telling uh, us that he, uh, he and uh, other people just went on using um, the principles that we showed in the workshop to go on uh, doing more workshops and thinking of um, how to go on with this. And um, the, what we really liked was that they, they were really into this idea of a Madrid type, Libre type scene, which is actually coming together apparently, and we're really excited about this. And, uh, and this is what got us thinking, yeah, we need a Porto type scene besides the Madrid type scene. Uh, we need a Brussels type scene and we need a London type scene. And, um, and when I mean type scene here, I mean Libre type, of course. Um, <laughs> because, of course, the traditional type scenes are there. There are small circles, as we said. But, um, and by scene, we, we like this idea of the demo scene, for, for instance, this uh, group of enthusiasts with, who gather in these really big uh, gatherings or the model, uh, train model um, conventions. And uh, we were thinking, yeah, it would be really beautiful if we had this because uh, LGM happens once a year. That's clearly not enough for us because it's also not just about type. Um, and um, so what is stopping us from having this local scene? Uh, well, the thing is that it's easy to start something. Start a project is always an exciting thing, and uh, in the case of a typeface, it's fun to draw letters. But then when you go into finishing the font, and that's the really hard part, when you need to deal with all the not so fun things as uh, spacings, kernings, packaging, the font log, the metadata, and the documentation. So that is, uh, that's what is pushing many people to just getting the drawings that they already have and do a finished thing and putting it out there. So we started playing with this idea, why not do a starter kit, something that will make these hard tasks of finishing and shipping easier. So um, just not to promise too much, uh, we're not presenting a starter kit. This is an idea we have, and we are going to show some baby steps that we have been uh, working on for that might lead to something like this. And we would like to put it to your appreciation, and then we can think together what this uh, kit actually could be, or if it should it be at all. So we start with Tiny Type Tools, which is a library that we've been um, irregularly uh, developing, which are FontForge scripts for uh, hacking type, and which made these uh, publishing, shipping, and editing tasks a lot easier for us, because they're really uh, boring. It's the kind of work that, um, honestly, I don't think anyone really enjoys the process of uh, dealing with saving the fonts in different formats, publishing them online, and so on. So um, just quickly, we have a GitHub repository for this. Um, and uh, we have font convert, that simple script that will convert your typeface from any format to any other format. Perfect for creating a shipping uh, ready version of a typeface. And this is an example for releasing in two different formats. Then we have uh, filters, FF filter stands for font forge filters which then became TTT ty tiny type tools um, and font forge has these awesome effects like shadow outline inline and so on which are hidden uh, in the interface well not hidden but not you don't have an ad at the, at the font forge website like you can apply shadow effects but you can and you can actually make 
funny things. We'll come back to this. Um, so in the command line, uh, you can, we just made this set of scripts that automatically generates these other um, versions, like outline versions, which in proprietary typefaces you usually have to pay for another weight just to have the outline versions. Uh, with these tools, you get them for free. Um, and transpacing. Um, this was a tool that we made to transplant spacings. Well, well, the thing was, we like drawing typefaces, we don't like to space them. Um, spacing them is basically that determining how much space goes in between each character and each specific pair of characters. It's a really long job. It's the one that they say that takes years. So uh, what we did was a script that gets your font with no spacing at all. You just drew the letters. And then you just find a similar font with a decent, uh, good spacing. And then you end up with a font with decent spacing, which is better than nothing. And it's better than just shoving it aside and saying, yes, yeah, someday I will finish it. And we all know that won't happen. Um, so this. Um, is a handy script, and it also works with kerning pairs. Not perfect, but um, it works for us. Oh, and by the way, every one of these scripts can only be used on Libre fonts, and that's something that we kind of make a point of uh, emphasizing, because no EULA will allow you to modify and redistribute a proprietary font. So um, again, we're talking really about specific things about uh, type that respects your freedom. Um, and for the website part, uh, we have been working, and you can see that the commits have been for quite a long time, but uh, Django application, Django is a web framework. Um, basically, we want to make a simple, <clears throat> simple system that you can just install in your server and gives you a CMS where you can upload fonts, edit their data, and not bother with anything else, and then it, it will give you a nice interface, preview specimens, and so on. We are still developing this. This. Um, and uh, if you're interested in this, let us know, um, because we really don't want to be alone uh, in this effort. Um, so these would be um, our uh, clues to begin thinking, how can we provide the tools to build a, a DIY type foundry, which is what we want, because we really want scenes to happen. And so this is a screenshot of the font foundry that we're launching this afternoon. It's not online yet, but it will soon be uh, because of some Murphy's server Small. problems. <laughs> yes. And so it's called uh, Oxshark Fontworks. We have a Portuguese name and we will have uh, both websites, Portuguese and uh, English, because we really want to focus on this idea of showcasing what's happening around us in a local scene. And uh, so what, what was our idea with, uh, with this foundry? So uh, going against the someday I'll finish it, we decided to ask a few friends uh, that we know that they had funds that were not finished, and we proposed them that, we, that they give us the funds, we will finish them, uh, do the spacing, package it, and, uh, and launch it. But uh, for that to happen, they need to agree that it will be released under the open font license. So in a way, we're working as font editors in an editorial kind of uh, way. So we take care of editing the font uh, as you edit an article. And uh, in exchange, uh, we release it in a free, um, in a free, with a f actually free license. And uh, it's also a way for us to make our friends get in touch with the uh, floss tools, the free culture, and all these ideas. So I'll go through the fonts that we're launching very quickly. This is a font inspired in a lettering in facades in Porto. It was uh, started in 2004, and uh, it had a lot of different names, and we finally finished it and are launching it today. Then another font that was started uh, three years ago, uh, inspired in accidents, accidents grotesque, and um, that was also waiting for spacing and kerning and all the things. Uh, Le Jerk, which is a typeface by Franca Debier that we got, a French typographer we got in touch with because we saw this specimen uh, on his blog that we really liked and he was not going to finish the typeface, so we proposed to finish it for him. Uh, then the font for the magazine, Prop Courier. Uh, Serreria, which we did here in Media Lab, with a new weights, outline, and shadow. And then the color fonts, 
which belong to this uh, jQuery library that we developed uh, about a year ago, and that we had to make a pack of uh, multicolored fonts. So fonts with uh, variants so that you can use with more than one color. Right, so our, um, we, we just did it also because we have to put our, mo or our money where our mouth is. We want to tell people, build your own foundry, so we start ours. And, and we ask you, do better than us, do better than this, please. Because we really want to have a network. We don't want to be the people who release this. Uh, we want people to get our fonts and uh, make them uh, better, make them worse, maybe. Um, and um, it's actually a pretty, uh, pretty fun process because you get in touch with wonderful people um, and uh, you can get them in touch with the principles that we um, espouse here in this community. So um, if I'm pretty sure that anyone here um, will have uh, some letters that are either drawn in a notebook or designer friends who have them, and uh, this would be our challenge. And uh, if, okay, if in your head there is still an issue, and I shall conclude, um, about, hey, um, but there is this step that I, I really don't know how to overcome. We really want to help you here. Um, so we really want to go on with the discussion. How can we make it easy to start a foundry? How can we make a Libra-type scene? And uh, how can we help you um, to find the charm of quick brown foxes? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So two questions for Manufaktura. They will uh, stay in Madrid for uh, two more weeks because they're part of the Interactivos project. So if you're in Madrid, uh, there's probably a chance you can speak to them in person. Um, I have a question. You were mentioning that uh, the release early release uh, that there is the impression that type is stable and it shouldn't change and it must be finished before it is released. Um, I think, in some sense, there is a reason for that because um, if you have a font and you have suddenly versions of the same font, your documents change. Uh, do you have any idea on how to approach? that problem or some kind of, uh, I think you would need some sort of versioning within your font uh, files or whatever. Yeah, that's an excellent question. It's also, uh, and one, uh, we don't have a quick answer for that other than, uh, well, versioning a font would be the logical choice and the font forge format actually lends itself really well to versioning. Um, and I think, yeah, uh, I think this also shows that uh, version numbering, for instance, is really important and keeping track of versions um, in the same way that you do with software. And before you launch a backwards incompatible version, um, you make it clear that this will break things. And this is probably um, something that an author will uh, need to take care with. Um, although, uh, on the other hand, um, I don't think... Uh, I wouldn't be uh, defending that this is a, an absolute premise for a font to be released, otherwise that might lead to exactly the, oh yeah, this detail is missing and I'll take care of that and then the font will bit rot to eternity. And also this idea that if you put it out there, probably someone will be uh, wanting to give you a hand and help with what's missing. Hmm. Yeah, but that's a good point, really good point. <coughs> Too many questions, so um, I, uh, I, I ask Nina. Okay, um, what will you do if a whole bunch of people like me uh, start sending you fonts? Because I would love it if you finished my fonts. Sure. <laughs> we'll politely ask you to build your own foundry because that's exactly the purpose. Now, um, you're totally right, and uh, we've been thinking about this. Well, what about submissions? And uh, on one hand, we don't... We don't want to be the dump, uh, the dumpster of unfinished fonts. Um, we actually will want to provide a tool so that anyone can actually take this on. And it's easier said than done, of course. It's, an, uh, it's still something that will need a lot of thinking of how, uh, what kind of tools do you need. Um, 
But uh, with regards to our own foundry, uh, we, we actually make a point of be us being the ones looking for them, uh, even though feel free to send, to, to send any font. Um, but we would argue that um, we would rather kind of make it easier for people to make, to package their own fonts and having these tools ready so that you don't have, so that this question doesn't even pop up because the, an ideal world would be the one that you just have this facility of finishing your font available because you have a foundry next to you. Um, but again, wonderful question and uh, something that we cannot really deal with at the moment because we would be overwhelmed if we had to finish. But uh, that's also a nice challenge. So by all means, again, send us your fonts and uh, we will uh, try to figure out a quick way to deal with all of them, I guess. Okay, thank you very much. A big applause for wonderful <laughs> tool independent. Uh,